Hello friends, my name is Real Emil and welcome back to some more Gran Turismo 2. Today we are continuing on with our Let's Play. This is episode 10. So in today's episode we are doing the Global Compact Car Cup. And well, I've actually changed my mind on what vehicle I'm going to use halfway through. You see, originally in this episode today, I was planning on using the Peugeot 306 S16. However, I kind of looked at the competition and I thought I was being a little bit overkill with this car and it isn't really that compact so I've decided to switch vehicle and I'm going to use something a little bit different and I bet you guys probably didn't even realise this car was even in Gran Turismo 2. Anyway we're going to head over to Tommy Kyra for the M13 Stage 2. Yeah this is um, from what I can gather from the information tab this is essentially a modified Nissan Micra uh, which has been tinkered by uh, Tommy Kyra and it's a bit lighter and it has a bit more power and yeah we're gonna drive it today because I find it very very interesting because I just kind of like the way it looks um, so first things first does this car have racing modification I bet not no it does not okay um, so while the Peugeot had 166 horsepower this has just 88 so yeah I think um, a couple of stages of tuning is in order and we are going to go and stick us a big turbo on this car if we can, which we can. Excellent. Uh, we'll have 150 brake horsepower in this vehicle. Uh, don't think I'm going to upgrade the tyres just yet. I don't think that's going to be much of an issue with this vehicle just yet. I might come back to it though uh, later on and obviously weight is not an issue. Uh, we'll go for the racing muffler as well for 165 horsepower and that's all I want to do to the M13 at the moment. Right, let's head over to the Compact Car Cup and our first race is at the Rome City course. Okay, take two. God damn, these, uh, the cars in this race are actually super, super aggressive. Uh, I kind of wish I put super softs on this now. Anyways, in this race we have a Toyota Yaris, a Honda Logo, a Lancia Y, which was one of the vehicles I was considering using. A Renault Clio, and I believe there's a Saxo or something like that up front. Um, yeah, those are the vehicles in this race. It turns out my um, Micra has a little bit of understeer, and it isn't quite as quick as you might expect. Apparently all the rest of these vehicles are super, super upgraded or something. Yeah, Lancia Y, that was the car I was considering using. A uh, very, very interesting looking car, the Lancia Y. I kind of like it. Uh, it's very quirky. The dashboard is um, super duper quirky inside those. It's really, really weird. Um, so the cars I was considering using, just the full list of them, because it was actually quite a lot of consideration uh, for this episode. There was the Lancia Y, um, the Peugeot 306, which of course I bought and decided not to use because... I don't really think the 306 is that compact a car, uh, so I decided against using that. There is the Alpha 145 Cloverleaf, which I am going to use for something else later on in the Let's Play. Uh, the Fiat Punto GT, which I decided not to go with, uh, just because we've used a lot of Fiats. Oh, sorry, we've used the Fiat already, and it was in uh, not too long ago, so yeah, I decided not to use another Fiat, and yeah. Those were the vehicles in consideration for this episode and ultimately by the looks of it I really should have gone with one of them because this Micra isn't quite as quick as you may expect or want. Oh sorry the M13 it isn't a Micra, it's the M13 Stage 2, whatever that means. I had to go with this though, I mean just look at it, it's super duper stupid, it's like... <laughs> it. It constantly looks surprised and smiling and scared all at the same time. Uh, yeah, it's also got a racing strike, which means it's quick. And I've got to try not to get overtaken by a bunch of, um, yeah. Well, there's a Lancia White and there's a Toyota Yaris coming up as well. So, yeah. Anyways, in that race, the Lancia Y went into second place. The Toyota Yaris was in third. The Honda Logo was in fourth. Renault Clio in fifth. And, uh, oh, there was another Lancia Y, was there? Apparently that car shouldn't have bothered showing up because, um, yeah, it didn't do very well. Anyways, onto the prize fund and we get four grand to add to our credits. Not like much good, but hey. And we also get a new car. Let's find out what it is. 
Okay, heading over to the garage now to see what we have unlocked. Let's have a look. We have got a, a Yaris. Because, of course we have. Yay. Uh, no, don't need you. Uh, you can go bye-bye because I don't need you and I don't want you in my life. Sorry, but I just don't. Anyways, um, back onto the racing calendar as we will head into our second event of the Global Compact Car Cup. And we are heading to the Seattle Short Course. Okay, we are back on track and in this race we have a Voxel Corsa, a Mazda Demio, a Lancia Y, I believe that might be a Suzuki wagon up there. Um, <laughs> for whatever reason, someone's decided to bring one of them along. Um, by the looks of it, to be fair, I don't actually think it's uh, it's just some silly Japanese car, I would assume. Oh, there's a Peugeot 106, and there is a oh, it's a Yaris, huh? Well, Yaris's are kind of big. Um, okay, either way, I'm getting destroyed by Saxos. Um, I've run into uh, one or two of these during these events, and those Saxos are very, very aggressive and very, very quick. Oh no, the Vauxhall course is in the lead, right. In the last race, I could somewhat stomach losing to a Vauxhall, uh, Vauxhall, a Volkswagen Lupo. Granted, I was bullying it a little bit, uh, saying that it really should be the Polo in the game and not the Lupo, um, but that doesn't matter. Um, I still got beaten by a Lupo, and I wasn't very proud of it. However, I will not be beaten by a Vauxhall Corsa in pickled onion, whatever the hell colour that's supposed to be. Because it looks awful. Anyways, yeah, um, I'm sorry. I will do one of these episodes without Super Softs, but I just... I, 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 I just couldn't be doing with it anymore. It was starting to irritate me a little bit, so Super Softs it is on the M13. Yeah, one of these, uh, next episode, actually no, not next episode, because I know exactly what we're doing next episode, and I know the sort of vehicles we're going to be racing, and I know exactly what sort of tyres I'm going to be wanting to use in, in that race, because, yeah, um, <laughs> it won't go well if I don't use Super Softs in the next episode, but after that, I promise I'll um, not use them, yeah, sure, right. Anyways, uh, on back to the M13, it is now uh, somewhat improved. This car was very understeery before. Now it's not as understeery. It's got a lot more turning grip. Granted, there's still a little bit more understeer than I'd probably like from this vehicle. Um, but it isn't too bad. Uh, and everything else about the M13 is pretty solid. I mean, straight line speed is uh, decent enough. Uh, what is winning out of their pack? I believe that's the Saxo. Um, doesn't really surprise me. That Saxo is monstrously quick. Anyway, across the line with the M13, and it was... Oh, wait, no, it's the Peugeot 106 in second, the Toyota Yaris in third, the Citroen Saxo in fourth, the Mazda Demio in fifth, and the Vauxhall Corsa probably broke down and goes into six. There you go, it's hideous, hideous shape is on the screen for more than ten seconds. Get it off. Right. Anyways, let's collect our prize money, which is another four grand. None of this race series is even going to pay for the super softs. I just had to. But hey, it doesn't matter. Anyway, moving on to the garage. What have we got in store for me? We have got a Renault Clio. Ha. Huh. Um, a, a straw yellow Renault Clio. Okay. Um. We'll keep it around, why not? I, I don't really know if there's anything I can do with that vehicle. Um, but there's no real point of selling it at the moment, so yeah, uh, we'll keep it in there for now. Anyway, we move on to our last race, which is at the Autumn Ring Circuit. Okay, we are on track at Autumn Ring, and there is a Toyota Yaris, a, a Mazda Demio, a Citroen Saxo, a Peugeot 106, which, oh god help me, and there's also a white thing which I'm assuming is Yaris. It kind of looks like a Yaris. It's not looking like a Yaris the closer I get to it. It is... Oh, it's another 106. Huh. Okay. Um, either way, apparently I've overtaken them all in the first corner. Yeah, there's so many cars you can use for this event. Uh, because honestly, there's a lot of vehicles I like. Um, in the end, I've actually gone with a vehicle I'm not a huge fan of. Well, I do like this car. I think it's kind of cool. Uh, but at the same time, like, this wasn't my first choice for this event, but I just decided to go for it because I assume probably no one 
even knows this thing exists in GT2 because no one ever uses it. Um, it's kind of obvious why. Um, I mean, to be fair, you don't get too bad value for your money. I mean, it's 90 horsepower, 890 kilograms for 16 grand. I mean, the Fiat Sesento costs 14, and that's got 20, 30 odd less horsepower than this. Uh, so, I mean, it's not a bad little car uh, for what it is. Granted, it is quite understeery once you put 180 horsepower in it. But then again, that's double the horsepower it came out of the factory with, so, yeah. Um, overall, I don't really mind it. It definitely is coming to its own on Autumn Ring. I am enjoying this vehicle a lot more on this track. I don't think it suits the city tracks too well. However, uh, it appears that uh, out here at the Autumn Ring, it actually isn't half bad, which is good. Uh, that's really good news uh, for the little M13 Stage 2. Anyways, um, they're not, they're kind of keeping up, which is nice. Um, I love it how this race is easier than the last few races. Like, this one's supposed to be the hardest race of them all, with a bigger horsepower limit and everything, and yeah, these vehicles are apparently slower than the ones I was dealing with around Seattle and the Rome circuit, which is fun. Of course, Gran Turismo Logic working well there as always. Autumn Ring track I do quite like. Uh, admittedly, I this track's just got less fun as uh, GT games have gone on, at least for me. I do prefer Autumn Ring Mini. Unfortunately, that is in this game. They don't use it in the career mode for whatever reason. Don't actually know why. Um, it's only in the tri time trial mode. Um, on the arcade disc, which I may play through the arcade disc. I actually found my arcade disc uh, the other day, which is quite a miracle. I uh, may play through the arcade mode at some point. It'll probably be uh, called a separate Let's Play, uh, because I don't really count these two games attached. Uh, but anyways, there we go. Anyway, we are across the line here at the Autumn Ring. I kind of think I know what the price car is for this race. Oh, by the way, the Demio came in second, which is excellent. Toyota Yaris in third. Peugeot 106 in 4th, Peugeot 106 in 5th, Citroen Saxo in last place, which is quite surprising. Two and a half seconds behind everything else. Which is really strange, because those Saxos were really OP in the last few races I played. Anyway, we have got an extra four grand, and we got a new car. Let's go and see what we've got. Okay, right, let's head over to the garage and see what we have unlocked. We have got a... Oh, it is exactly what I thought it would be. We've got a Volkswagen Lupo, 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 Lupo. Comes in a terrific colour, but no point of keeping it because I'm not going to use it at all. Anyways, yeah, that was the Compact, World Compact Car Cup. I believe that's what it was. Anyways, join me in the next episode. We'll be taking on another race series. So yeah, anyways, thank you all very much for watching. My name's been The Real Meal, and until next time, farewell.